Welcome back. It's Jame again. Today we're going to take a look at probably the most scorable course. Um, I've played it twice in Worlds Qualifications, and that's Elk Front. Elk Front is a super, super fun course. Um, this is one of the first, or one of the only holes on a hole one I don't approach T-less, or I approach T-less, I don't use a T on. And the reason why, a lot of people like to blast it out there and send it into the bunker. For my chip or stinger shot, I just want to be at the end of the fairway. And again, I'm not going into details of the stinger shot, but I always stinger this with the zero bird regardless of the wind. And there's a very specific reason why I always zero bird this. And that's why. Because the wind doesn't play much effect. Um... There are some times that you have to do a click count with it. Again, go to campaign mode, test it out. They kind of figure out the power and the click counts for yourself. All right, hold two. We're gonna go ahead and move a gold tee all the way to the left because the pin's way back on the right. And of course they give us a pin that I cannot attack with a uh, javelin. I don't believe so. Depends on what club I get to use. I might be able to. If I would. We're going to try it with the javelin. Uh, this could very well catch the... Could catch the rough on the water, but we're going to try it with the javelin anyway. I think I want to go right about there. I feel like that's too far left. I need to go one more to the right. There we go. All right. We need to take off eight yards, which is roughly 3% off. It's a little less than three. Two and a half would be seven. So it's like 2.8% off. Um, This whole almost always without any wind is going to play a little short so we're going to take 3% off and go from there let's see what it does right about there send it out okay we need to take a little bit more off but we went at the hole gave it a healthy shot at pulling out Two, the first two holes in a row. They did not give us the tee box over here, which I was hoping for, so I could attempt at a stinger on this. But they did give us enough green to uh, be able to go at this with a wind cutter. All right, we need to take five yards off. It's two and a half percent. The up one win and the up one green will cancel each other out. So we're gonna go two and a half percent off to 97.5. There, is that it? I think I might've went a hair long. I did, I should've left it where it was originally at and it would've gone in the hole. Either way, we picked up 13,000. GSP. That's two holes that were very close to hole outs. And Elk Front has probably the most opportunities for hole outs of any of the holes in the game. Alright, I'm always on this hole going to take a gold tee, move it over here, 
and immediately apply a Maniacs. Then I look at what club I want to use. I have a driver will get me there. What I like to do is find the club that's going to get me to the middle of the island, but the driver is the one club I won't use, so I'm going to kind of creep it in a little bit. And I do a B1 cut around the rock and just try to trickle it onto that thing. If anybody saw my match versus RKT in the uh, World Championship qualifiers, you don't want to land directly on the grass because most of the time you're going to catch a slope that's going to kick you into the water. Alright, for this one, the pin is back left, which is good. We didn't get a tucked front pin, so we're going to have a chance at a hole out. We're going to go ahead and apply a uh, Maniacs. That's going to make my driver go another 25 yards to 342. And I would need to lose 18 yards. Oh, uh, 18 yards with a 317 club is going to be 5.7% roughly that we need to take off. We do have a slightly down towards us wind. So mm, we'll call it 5% that we need to take off. And then the driver is gonna cut the upslope of the green in half to 3% that we need to take off. This green is a little bit uphill. It does not always play the same. So we're gonna go to like 2% off and see what that does. Go to 98%. And we're going to go our, our left uh, for the driver and then bring it back in just a little bit for that left one. Ooh, stay right. Yeah, I feel like that's probably good right about there. This is kind of a feel setup. I feel like that's good. We're going to go to 98%. I needed it to catch the very, very front edge of the green, and it would have ran all the way to the back with the driver. But it's okay. We've got a putt with only a left one, so it's not going to be too hard to make. Alright, so we're at 7 under. Uh, we could have potentially been at 9 under already by now. That's what I love about this course. For this hole, I also primarily go T-less. Um, the, the only thing I've remembered, and I go from here with all of my approaches, is that the 3 wood with directly sideways wind or no wind at this hole is going to go approximately 314 yards. We have a slightly forward wind and we need to lose four yards from that 314. So we're gonna take 2% off to 98%. And now we're gonna adjust for the wind. We are pretty close to straight. Unfortunately, the flag line doesn't carry up. So there's a lot of eyeballing guesswork um, for the 1.5 right, the wind's going to have way more effect on this hole because it's staying in the air longer for that severely drop down or recessed green. And then it's going to go left two. Normally a 1.5 left and a left two would just be one click over in towards the G and shot guide, but we're actually going to go a little bit more this time. And again, because we don't have the flag line coming up, it's, there's a lot of eyeballing that takes place. Just kind of guessing where we want to go. And we're going to go, like I said, 2% off. And even that was too much. It did go 310, and here's something I want to point out. We needed 310 yards to go, and I completely forgot this. We had 310 to the flag, and I went 310.4, and it was still 5 yards long. This hole 
is going to register five yards longer than what it actually plays. And you need to remember that. So when you set up for your shot, and had I remembered that, I had a pretty good line. It actually looked like it might have gone in. Whatever the whatever the shot says, just remember the two numbers to start with and then go from there. Your three wood is going to go 314 with no wind. And whatever the flag says, take five yards off, and that's how far you actually need to go. So when it said 310 there, it was actually 305 out. And had I remembered that, I would have taken 1.5% more off, down to about 965 and been pretty much on top of the hole. All right, we have another shot at GSPs or a hole out here, and we have different options. Um, because we're so far back on the green, we could go to the two iron and add a T and try to sting it. It depends. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and I'm probably gonna take a mulligan because it's not the play that I want. I I I'd never sting this green. But I am gonna I am going to apply a, a silver T. The down three that the green has with the woods, it's negligible. It doesn't register. It's one of those greens that uh, Golden T loves to do that. It's a down three, but it plays up three, and they cancel each other out. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna go 250 with this, but we're just gonna try to sting this and see where we can get. And then I'm probably going to take a mulligan and go to the six wood. Yeah, the six wood like I normally would. All right, we're just going to go full. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't sting that. Even, even, even if I'd used a gold tee. Let's see, let's try a gold T full power and see what it, a gold high T full power. And that that was the shot that we needed right there. But I'm not gonna keep the GSPs because, like I said, I I would never, primarily, almost never go at this with a two iron. So we're gonna go at it with the six wood like I normally would. We have 1.5 right, which is nine clicks, and then a run one right green, green slope which is four more clicks, so we need to go 13 clicks to the right. Back one. Right there. All right, we need to take four yards off, which is going to be 1.6 off, so we're going to register it just below 1%, like right there. And that's normally what I would shoot. I should have added just a little bit more to make sure it gets to the pin, but shit happens. All right, for this one, I always use a a gold tee and I position it depending on where I'm going um, and the wind. I have a Ford wind so I'm going to be using a sniper instead of a maniacs and I don't want the snipe to go into the rough so we're going to put it about here we're going to aim up towards the front of that little fairway over there and shoot a sniper out and see, that put me in the rough, so we're not looking too good here. I don't like hitting out of the rough, and I should have should have used a uh, high loft driver, but oh well. All right, primarily in the rough, the play is to use an all-terrain ball, but we're just going to club way up and use a sniper since we're hitting out of the rough and just try to stick it on the green. 
because when you're hitting out of the rough, there's there, there's a lot of differentiation in what the power is going to actually do versus what the distance says. A lot of players have, will, can probably attest to noticing uh, hitting out of the rough with a club that says it's going to go 260, hitting a full shot unobstructed, and it still only goes 240 yards. But then the next time you hit out of the rough and it says it will go 260, it goes the full 260. I have yet to figure out why it goes in between hitting the full power it says it's going to go versus coming up short. I have no idea. I want to say it's a glitch in the game. But I'm sure the uh, programming has its reasons. All right, for this hole, we're going to use a gold tee again. I use a lot of gold tees. So, but this is one of the holes that actually requires you to use a gold tee, a gold high tee to get over the mountain. We're going to line up with a flag stick by pulling down to see it, letting go. And then we're going to move to the nine wood first. And since it is a back flag, we get to use a wind cutter again. Now I'm going to pull back up to find that flag line again. I have a slight left wind with a right one, but the left wind is going to play a little bit more. So we're going to go over to like right here. Let it go. And then for the power, we need to take off 8 yards, which is about 3.6%. We need to take off about 2.4 more for the wind, so we're taking off 6 and we're only going to take off 1% for the down 3 because the green plays up 2, so we're taking off 7%. And that was close. I, I might have taken off a hair more than 1% more, but it's alright. So that now shows you that even though I'm already at a 1 better and on pace for a 15 under, there were four more potential hole outs on holes two, three, um, six, and eight already. This was a very prime setup. So finishing finishing 15 under would actually be uh, quite upsetting because the three more hole outs puts me at a, or four more possible hole outs, and then this hole is a possible hole out, five more possible hole outs. Puts me at a uh, potential minus 20. So to shoot 15 under, it's kind of upsetting. Alright, for this hole, we club down. We have a lot of options here. I'm going to play this with a wind cutter again. I'm gonna, Before I do that, I'm going to show everybody a, uh, a shot that I occasionally do just for shits and giggles. And that's off the mountain. The reason why I like to shoot it off the mountain sometimes, and I'm going to take a mulligan here, but the reason why I like to shoot off the mountain sometimes is just because it's a fun shot. I mean, there's not really anything that you're losing by doing it, but if you watch the reaction that a grabber has, it trickles onto the green for those front left pins. So instead of trying to hit it exact, when you have those pins that are left towards the mountain... Just just take your just take a club that's gonna put you right here to the end of in the mini map you'll see some kind of a like light brown strip. Take whatever club's gonna put you to the end of that, which is normally gonna be your seven wood. And then apply a grabber if the wind's in your face or sideways. You know, we're gonna adjust a little bit for the wind. Uh if the wind's pointing left, then we would go this way some for the wind. We don't add anything. We might add a T or something for the wind in our face. Because the, it's not ever going to stop on the mountain. If the wind was behind us and pushing forward, then we would take some power off. So that it doesn't. you don't want it to land on the green after the mountain. Because then the grabber just kind of grabs and does what it does. We want to hit the mountain with the grabber so that it kind of rolls on with that beautiful roll that it had. And gives it some chance of rolling in the in the hole. I have had a couple. When I say a couple, I mean two hole outs doing that. It's pure luck. I'm. It's just like just like any other hole when you're hitting off of a rock. 
anything you do, you're just kind of a uh, guessing, getting in the general area, guessing and crossing your fingers and praying. All right, for here, we're going to adjust for the wind. This is a feel hole. You kind of got to feel where the, the right three is going to do. And then we're going to adjust a little bit more for the uh, right two of the green. The way I play this, as I go by the numbers, I am 238 to a 246 pin. That's 8 yards. I need to add about 3.4, a little more than 3.4%. And with the downwind, we're going to have to add, we'll say 1.6. That way, it'll add to the 3.4 and mean I need to add 5. Alright, so if I have to add 5 yards, or 5%, and then because it's downhill, the wind's going to play a little bit more. So we're going to have to add about 6.5%. This green typically plays down 10. So we're going to take 3.5% off. And in this case, the wind took a lot more effect than I accounted for. But it got me a pretty close shot. So I'm going to be able to finish out here with a simple putt and post a kind of disappointing 15 under and let's see what our GSP count is because that's really what's going to win you most of your contests in elk front 32,000 GSPs with a 15 under on a setup like that on elk front probably would not win it actually um, I would Totally expect that this was an expert gold contest to finish in around third place with that score. It'd be very rare for that setup. I it, it could win um, quite often some in in some setups, but not with the setup that we had there. That that would not be a winning score. While I'm still here, um, before we go. I do want to uh what was it I wanted to do Ah uh, yes We're going to we're going to take a sneak peek at my next course that I'm going to play and that's Hawthorne Front I'm going to show you something with Hawthorne 9 This hole here gives a lot of players problems um I can't go into every aspect of how to play this because there's three different tee boxes on expert or pro. You're never going to get the middle tee box. You're always going to get a side tee box and then the wind plays such an effect. I have a prime wind, a, a left wind from the left tee box. If we had a right wind from the left tee box or a left wind from the right tee box, we have a fighting wind, but we have a prime wind, so we're going to have a good could go at this shot here <laughs> now since it's not too terribly much in my face I am going to go up to the high loft driver the shot that I'm going to do here is going to take off about 12 percent which is 39 yards it's going to make me go 286 I have a slight wind in my face and then the shot's also going to play left 12 we're gonna use this we're gonna use a sticky and we're gonna do a full B1 and send the sticky at the flag and because we had the downwind we didn't get the full distance but it gave us a pretty straight uphill putt if we take a mulligan we can actually attempt to do the same shot with a driver and I want to show you the difference between using the driver and using the uh, high loft driver for full B1s if we do the same thing here now remember we went 279 which is two yards uh, or six yards less with that so since we're adding 10 yards when you only add six, we can take one percent off. But since I, I'm gonna set it up the same as I did with the uh, high loft driver, and if we take one percent off with the driver and do the same shot, 
we're not going to get the same curve out of this as you can see and here's why the driver is going to have a much less a much lower line of flight and since it carries uh since it carries uh 93 percent a, the driver on this hole with a uh, B3 is actually going to go less than the high loft driver. So if we go here and set this up and go full power, we went full power with the uh, we went full power with the high loft driver and got on at 279. But if we do the same shot full power with the driver, we barely get on and we actually kind of scrape on. So the, and as you can see, it ended up further right because the driver is not in the air long as long as the high loft driver to be affected by the wind so the best thing that you would actually have to do is move in more apply a gold t and a sniper and then don't quite go out as far with the uh with the up swipe To be able to get the distance to the pin. So. I hope that helps a little bit. Um, I could probably do an entire video. Just on Hawthorne 9 alone. Just because of the uh, numerous. Possible setups. And wind combinations. That they would give you. hope you guys are enjoying the videos um again hit the like button subscribe share it with your friends uh, the more subscriptions and likes that i get the higher i'll move up on the youtube category maybe get ads and i can get paid to do this but if not i enjoy doing it for fun and i enjoy uh helping you guys figure this wonderful game out to any level that I can. Thanks for watching.